Welcome to the Good Rookie Show. My name is Fahim. And my name is Nelly J, y'all. And we are Good Rookie. That's right. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Happy Good Tuesday. And guess what? It's the Good Rookie Show. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. As we go. Yo, so, you know how we do, y'all. We're from Toronto. Okay, we live in Toronto. From the 6th. The capital of Canada. Sorry, Ottawa. Your team's being sold, so and no one wants to buy it yet, except for one actor. So you're not the capital anymore. <laughs> Toronto, the capital of Canada. Um, <laughs> if you're asked a question though on a quiz, please put Ottawa. <laughs> Don't put <laughs> Toronto. Anyway, reflecting ourselves today, y'all. So guys, as you know, we bring the hottest topics in sports and culture. And you know, this week is no other team. Yo, I don't know about you, but it gets so dark so early, bro. I I can't. My body's not used to it. Like at four o'clock, mm -hmm. it's nighttime in Toronto, guys. It's really bad. Like <laughs> I understand, clock gotta go back, but yo, this is crazy. Like how dark yeah. it is already. Um, but anyway, um, you know, speaking of how dark things is, uh, it's kind of dark. I see a cloud covering Fahim, a cloud covering um a team, a very viable team. Mm -hmm. Um, they're located in Dallas, um, mm. and that team has an owner, and that owner. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, wasn't a picture, and that picture mm. was uh, a picture of him in North Little Rock, I believe. Um, where five uh, black or colored uh, individuals trying to go to school, and apparently he was in that picture of mob mm -hmm. mobbers, mobs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. white supremacists, um, racists, mm -hmm. who were trying to inhibit those students from going to get an education because you right. know back then. Folks were separated, segregated, you name it. Mm -hmm. um, but he was in there. Uh, he was in a picture. So, Fahim, this came out this week. A lot of stuff came out about this. Uh -huh. What is your thoughts of the picture? Now, have you seen the picture? Right. First of all, you have? Okay, great. All right. So what's yeah. your thoughts on this picture? First of all, it was broken by the Washington Guardian, I believe. Or Washington okay. Guardian, I think. I don't want to pick up the post, but the mm -hmm. Washington Post, Washington Guardian. I don't know which one's different, but they broke the news and the reason why they broke it for him because they said uh quote unquote that you know they haven't hired a black coach mm. so um we understand folks <laughs> back in the day were racist but you haven't hired a black coach at all on your, in your franchise so all right me, what's your thoughts on this and this correlation of no black coaches ever being hired as a head coach there. Okay, so that is a quick question. So one I came across it pretty recently just maybe even two days ago. Um I saw it I just have this, like, I saw the IG post. I looked mm -hmm. at the young photo. They had the present day uh, Jerry Jones and then the young photo of him. And which when I looked at it, I was like, wow, that guy looks just like him. Did they confirm that's it? That's him first they of all. Confirmed. Before... Actually, they confirmed. Wow. Not only okay. that. So the so Washington Post was, was was the company that broke it out. So big up okay, to them. Yeah. Not only did they confirm it, they actually spoke to him about it too. And he made wow. a comment about the, ah, post, about the picture. Okay. So this okay. has been confirmed. This, this is no like, you know, fake mm -hmm. news. Right, right, been right. confirmed. He was there. He went to that school. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, wow, that's crazy. And all so that. So that has been confirmed already. Uh, uh -huh. The question is now, uh, because it's Jerry Jones, you know, mm -hmm. he is, again, y'all, this, this photo was, uh, was from 1957. Right. right. So, so and this is an old picture. Yeah. And I want to get context, the, yeah. And, this, and he was 14 at the time. Right. So just for context, because um, even in history, what I've known, um, I do remember there's been instances, especially at uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, definitely. So that's where, uh, for anyone who maybe remembers, there's kind of iconic photos of um, black students um, being stopped by uh, white students as they're entering schools. Mm -hmm. um, just looking at that photo, that's what I'm saying. That's why I, I was not saying I didn't believe it, but it would be very easy for someone just to doctor something with technology now, right? To think for that sure. he's part of what seemed to be kind of an iconic photo uh, that you, you know, you had the mob of say maybe 30 or 40 uh, white students and the handful of black students. And to see he wasn't front row, but he was in the middle of the pack and he didn't, I mean, a picture can be interpreted, you know, it's worth a thousand words, but it didn't seem like he was in that melee trying to break it up. It seemed like I can definitely 
agree that it's not a good look for him to be in that melee. Now, you're right. Now, present day, the fact that he hasn't hired a black coach, um, yeah, it's I, 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 it seems like you have more information on this. You need to kind of unpack this more for me because it's not yeah, a good look. I mean, and something, go ahead. Well, that's the thing, right? Like, he was in a picture. Mm -hmm. um, so let me tell you what Jerry Jones said. And again, guys, this is all from Washington Post. Speak up to them. Okay. Right. So um, he says, I, he said, he quote unquote said, um, um, so Jim, so Jim Albright per Jones told the team that he didn't want to see any of you not heads near the front of that school, Jones claims. So Jim Albright, I think that was um, a coach or someone that worked at the school. So he told him to don't go around there. He's like, don't go near the front of the school tomorrow. He told him that. So he was born not to go there tomorrow, Jim Al Albright. And I believe that was a coach or someone that of Jerry Jones that told him not to do it. So he said um, that um, he was there to watch, not participate. So what he said was, I don't know what I or anybody anticipated or had a background of knowing what was involved. Jones said the post, it was more a curious thing. And yes, he was 14 at the time. You're curious and I get that. But then I wanted more from Jerry Jones for me, Fahim. I want him to say yeah. it wasn't right for those kids to do that. It wasn't yeah. fair for them to ambush or to refuse those kids from coming to the school. Like I need more from Jerry Jones. That's my, my thing is that... Mm he has to be asked questions and I think it's fair after the media went after Kyrie, right? Went after Kanye, right? Mm -hmm. I need the same energy towards Jerry. Right. And right. Me, my thing is that, will Jerry have to take training? Will he have mm -hmm. to go and do um, work on, on, on white supremacy and what, and what that is and, and what that looks like and how to, you know, like there are things that Kyrie, Kyrie, Ha, like I think they share three places that Kyrie donated, and he still donates. Kyrie has always been that kind of person. I'm not saying Jerry Jones isn't, but my thing is that Kyrie had a list of things that he had to do that was published, right? My thing for Jerry Jones is that the same people, especially the black media who went after Kyrie, I just hope that they don't, you know, scurry away because at the end of the day, for him, we spoke about Kyrie. We spoke about how we felt about that situation. With Jerry mm -hmm. Jones, I'm not calling him racist. I'm not calling him not racist or whatever. I'm here to say that I need more from Jerry Jones. What was your thoughts okay. on that situation? How did you feel about your fellow students doing that? Were you right. on their side or not? Or were you well, educated? And when he found out, you were like, nah, they shouldn't do that. Right? Mm -hmm. You were warned not to be there and you still went out of curiosity. So well, I'm not going to call Jerry Jones a liar. My thing is just that, and in the day, I just hope that the players of the Cowboys, the folks at, in that organization, ask him questions and verify Mr. Mm -hmm. NFL Goodell and the other, verify his stance on, on where he stands on that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I do want to add is that, um, again, even the Washington Post, they weren't saying that he was a part of it or not. All they're saying that he was there. They asked him why he was there. But it's true. They even reported that there's very limited minorities on that, on that staff. And he's yeah. hired very minimal coordinators on that team that's black or brown, okay? Mm -hmm. So... We, we cannot deny that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We can okay. look at picture and go, okay, we can all make our own assumptions, right? And as it is what it is, I'm not here to tell you what to think or how to believe in Jerry Jones. But what we can say is that in that in that organization, those fans are black and brown, but the people working there aren't black and brown. All right. So, so that's just my thoughts on him and that picture. But then the day, we all can assume that men from that era were probably prejudiced or racist and so forth. Because they were taught that, right? They're, it's a systemic right. thing. Like, they're taught to be racist. All However, right. However, you're now 80. We, we need him to ask some questions. And I hope he has to do interviews with whoever and ha and dig deep. Like, what happened? And where are you Where are you now? Because they went after Kyrie Fahim. Like, it was crazy, right? For, like, multiple, multiple media folks went after him. So my thing is that the picture's out there. He was there. His comment to me in his article from what I read it's not enough for me saying that I, I was there for a curiosity. Okay. So then after now send a picture of Jerry Jones, how do you feel about that? What's your thoughts on those black students that were trying to get into your school? Like, I want to know the, the meat of it for him. You know what I'm saying? That's just mm -hmm. me though. So you said you're not going to call him a liar. Um, I will. And the opinions expressed <laughs> are those of participants being me. Um, <laughs> you're, you're lying. <laughs> now, uh, first of all, 
he obviously went to a school which was all white. Okay, first of all, um, so he was in a segregated school. He was. It's not like he said, "Hey, like he wasn't aware that they're going to have black uh, students coming to the school." Then that would I'd understand the curiosity, you know, like what's happening here. But if you knew going into that situation that there are going to be black players going, or not black players, black students going to the school. It's beyond curiosity because no one in that mob there was curious. Um, they were there to actually stay, take a stand and make their voice known. So um, I'm calling Jerry Jones a liar. Um, and I do think that, you know, we are in cancel culture right now, right? Um, you know, it's and it's very easy to look into someone's past, know what's perfect and dig it up. But I think, you know what, if there is something in someone's past, um, they should own it. I don't think from what you're telling me, there's enough ownership, especially since he is in a situation of ownership. Okay. Um, now him hiring a uh, black, uh, you know, personnel. Um, here's what we don't want. We don't want it to be where uh, bl black people are being hired um, just as like a minority hire. Right. We, we have identified that there's a need for black um, management. Um, but it's got to be genuine. Um, I'm just wanting to know, and maybe we can, I've been to see how many black uh, coaches or how much black um, management has even been interviewed. You know, if they're getting interviews and not getting it, I get it. If you're telling me that you have this in the past, um, and mind you, Jerry Jones is not alone. Uh, pretty much anyone, if like if you're, not all white people back in the civil rights movement were racist. You know, there's some allies also. We got to keep that real. But if we have a photo of you being with those that are not allies, um, you know, we need more. So I agree with you 100%. Um, I do think if we're going to cancel other people or look to cancel other people, I'm not saying we can cancel uh, Jerry Jones, but we got to hold him accountable. Well yeah, I mean, like, if you're a canceler, because I think we, you and I aren't cancel people. Like, we've never mm -hmm. been like, that's canceled. No. However, I, I have stopped investing in certain stores or I have stopped buying certain brands because of what they've done to their models or with their models or campaigns. So I'm not going to cancel you. I'm just not going to buy your stuff. Like, mm -hmm. if my friend bought your stuff, I'm not going to be mad at them. But the thing that I don't mm -hmm. buy or invest my time or money in. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we saw Balenciaga had the, the weird S and M children purses that came. Like, uh, yo, listen, man, people be mm -hmm. wilding out here. So, mm -hmm. but some some people are gonna say they're canceled, but they're gonna buy their stuff like a year later. So, mm -hmm. for me, like, I'm not a part of the cancel culture. I just think that okay, that's who you are, no problem. Like, yeah, I'll buy my purse from somewhere else. But to your point, there has been, and I've, I was told by some folks that are Dallas Cowboys fans that there were opportunities to, to hire qualified. Uh, mm -hmm. black like black coaches for that team so mm -hmm. why they weren't hired i'm not sure but we know right. that sometimes it's not because they're like it's because they're comfortable hiring someone that looks like them that's the issue right. about systemic issues it's not because they're not qualified right. black people are never hired to be honest for him when we're hired for jobs we're, we're pretty much overqualified like <laughs> that's pretty much our, our, our culture like you even a head coach doesn't get a job without having like years but right. white coaches, Steve Nash's, um, Saturday, uh, Cole Jeff Blake, Saturdays, right? They're getting hired because hey, I like you. We play, you know, golf a few times, and we're friends, right? You really see a black coach get hired like that. So my thing is that it's the, it's not the same because the system is built for them and not for us. Steve so, Kerr, I'm yeah. calling them out right now. So so when we're hired, even mm. if it's a minority hire for him, we're, we're qualified. Like we're we're really qualified. So mm -hmm. I don't mind if, if they're hiring us because we're minority um right. i'm okay with that because typically if they're gonna hire one of us is because we have like a lot of things in our back right um, but to your point um so jerry Jules was actually his coach warned him not to go so to your point fahim i'm going to rescind my comment jerry jones <laughs> is a liar because right. if your football coach the night before is telling you do not i don't want to see none of y'all in the front of the school that mm -hmm. means jerry he obviously mentioned why <laughs> mm -hmm. right he mentioned why he mm -hmm. said, well, we're going to have a few kids that are from the other, you know, color kids coming to the school. And I suspect people are going to put us against them. So I don't want to see, like, he's, mis he's, he is, um, he's refused, what's, what's the word of, no, not liar, but, you know, withholding. 
That's all right. story, right? Because there's nowhere coach was to say, hey, guys, don't go there tomorrow. And no kids saying, but why, coach? Mm-hmm. You're asking why. So, Fahim, you're right. right. They asked him why. He told them why. They knew what was going to happen. But I think, who knows? Maybe Jerry went there to see what they were going to do. But, honey, you were really close to the front. Like, I, he was what, real close to the front. You know what I'm saying? So, uh-huh. even if, like, and, and again, I don't I don't live in that time. So, for those who did, um, I'm assuming, I'm thinking, if you know people are going to go there to refute kids coming to the school, you probably either going to go there to stop those other kids or mm-hmm. not be there at all. Like, right. that's what I'm thinking. So, right. yeah, I refute. Yeah, Jerry, I'm sorry. You're with, yeah. I'm going to call you a liar, but you're withholding the full story, brother. Right. Like, and, and, again, I'm not saying you can't change, but I hope and I pray that this, um, and uh, again, the article was called uh, Uncovering. Hold up. It was called, very clever co- article. It was called, um, let me just bring the article name. Um, I think it was called the, un- the uh, like, what the hell is the name of it? I'm trying to find the name. Sorry. Oh, uh-huh. just that. Watching the post will make you pay for it. So it was, co- it was called Cowboys owner Jerry Jones brushes off for Port Rift. But um, yeah, there's many things. So yeah, Jerry Jones has never hired a black head coach, right? Th- uh-huh. Like never. And that was the title of this article. Uh-huh. He could, and I try to click on the link, but you know, it's making me ask for some, some money. <laughs> oh, except when it comes to race. So Jerry Jones, yeah, so, I mean, we got to see how this turns out. But mm-hmm. Washington Post, you know, they broke yeah. the news. Oh, I, I can get the article now. Oh, they asked for money, but now I can get it. Okay, great. <laughs> so, um, they broke the news. And the article was actually called, Jerry Jones helped transform the NFL, except when it comes to race. That was mm-hmm. the name of the article. Okay. So, okay. Um, guys, oh. read the article if you can. Um, you know, c- come to your own conclusion. We're not here to influence your decision. No, no, no. On how to move and how to how to think or how to approach this, I Good just take, think that right? we just have to. We can't like if we're if we're coming after Kevin Hart for his tweet t- ten years ago or other actors and other actresses who tweet stuff thirty years ago, right? We come after them for him. They they, they cancel mm-hmm. show. They get canceled for mm-hmm. stuff they tweeted out 30, 50 years ago. Right. If you're a cancel person and you went after them, my thing is that why haven't you gone after Jerry Jones? Right. That's just my and, question to you. And if you're that person, like you, you can't pick and choose when you want to cancel. Um, it just has to be consistent outrage <laughs> for so everything. The NFL has a history of racism. Let's be real. Like quarterbacks couldn't be black, uh, just off no. of you know them thinking that uh, blacks didn't have the mental capacity to hold uh, the position down. So I mean. If he's already in a situation where race is blatant, um, even down to the uh, Colin Kaepernick kneeling, that had a divide also. I just think that if he's dwelling in a place where race is a very sensitive thing, I think he has to go above and beyond and, and show his support Agreed. in whatever it is. Agreed. And uh, second of all, I think we should just go with, um, it's kind of guilty by so- association. You know, I mean, if there's if it there's a mob, black people every day for him. But go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Yeah, if, if there's a mob of people jumping somebody, and you just happen to be there just to see what's going on, um, and the cameras show it, even though you may have not thrown a punch, just your participate, your support of the situation can make you an accomplice in somewhat. So, I mean, like Jerry Jones, we just I think we need to see something from Jerry Jones. Think about it. Dallas has a a large po- population of black people, perhaps. You might want to make a donation of some kind or show or do something, something to show some support. Um, he hasn't put his face forward to be an advocate in some way. This is a, his opportunity to make good with that. Um, in regards to. I do want to add one thing before we change to the next topic. Um, mm-hmm. So this, uh, this um, Sports Illustrated or Fan Nation, they had an article. Um, when was this pub published? published February 4th of 2022 mm-hmm. and they talked about um there were there, there are 20 leadership roles in Dallas area sports right Cowboys Dallas Mavericks Texas Rangers Dallas Stars FC Dallas mm-hmm. black people o- hold only 3 3, three. um 3 management uh, type CEO positions of the Mavs since Marshall uh-huh. Mad General manager Nika Harrison and Cowboys vice president of player personnel, Will McClay. 
Jason That's Kidd is my racial. Management. He had a coach, but there's only three in all of Dallas, right? And this is something that happens, I guess, in every area in mm-hmm. America, especially even in Canada, happens. But you know, I mean, our president is black. Our, our you know, we got we got Masai, but like we have quite a few diversity in our staffing here. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just shows Fahim that this is not only just a product of like where he grew up, but also where his company or business resides in too. Right. Like, it's something that he has to, you know, not just come out. You have to, as you said, give the charge, right? Um, promote, help, or even like like build in, like mentor, right? Like there are black, a lot of black athletes that played in the NFL that have the wisdom to help build mm-hmm. a team, scout, you name it. So I just hope this challenges the Dallas Ma- the Dallas uh, Cowboys organization, their staff, their personnel, yeah. and their HR department. What are we mm-hmm. doing to combat this issue of minority? Because our owner has been seen in pictures. And him, that picture, he's in a third row back. Third row. Yeah. <laughs> He's so close to the front of it. Like, mm-hmm. you're, you're curious, Fahim. Like, again, I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to point out that mm-hmm. we just can't let this go by and go, oh, whatever. He was mm-hmm. he's an old guy. What do you expect, Janelle? He's racist. Mm-hmm. I don't care about that. Now that you, right. like you're an owner of a team and a business, we got to keep the same energy. If y'all went after Kyrie, okay, because some of y'all did in the media, <clears throat> Barkley, <clears throat> Shaq, I hope y'all have the comments for Jerry Jones, too. That's, That's right. So. I agree. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jerry Jones, uh, the uh, owner of the Dallas Cowboys, uh, we did. So let's see. They have the 50 most valuable sports tra- franchises of 2022. And no surprise, Dallas Cowboys is number one in the world in regards to valuable franchises. Uh, Dallas Cowboys right now are worth $8 billion. He purchased it in 1989. Uh, for a cool 150 mil. Um, a cool no. 150 mil. <laughs> <laughs> um, now we're at a one, uh, 8 billion. So, you know, I want to shout out, uh, you know, just uh, the Cowboys in regards to being the number one franchise. Um, I'm just going to actually want me to just quickly just go over the list of maybe yeah, the top, the top real quick. The top mm-hmm. ones? Okay, cool. So we got Cowboys, number one. Uh, number two, NFL again, the Patriots at uh, 6.4 billion. The Rams. Which is, I'm not gonna lie, I'm surprised, but shouldn't be because they won the Super Bowl. But just amazing what one Super Bowl can actually do. Because if they didn't win the Super Bowl, I don't know if they'd be top, top five. But yeah, anyway. So they're number three at six point two billion. The Yankees are number four at six billion. Uh, number, f- sorry, my my, my the Yankees are number three at six billion. Number four, the New York Giants at six billion are number mm. four, and number five are the we have the Knicks. The Knicks with five point eight. It's all, billion. Is that all New York team? We have, we have you said Yankees, yeah. Giants, and Knicks. All New York team. Yeah, wow. uh, three, four, five. So Top yeah, five. crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a um on. So it doesn't get into. Let's just uh, kind of spread it out here because it seems to be like a North American, you know, football. Uh, number one basketball I, I, team. I think there was but, one. No, the basketball you said you said Knicks. Next, um, next, but, number but, one. But I think I think I saw an English team, English Premier team in there. Yes, you did. Uh, so uh, let's see. Actually, it's the Spanish league. So Real Madrid okay. was number thirteen at five billion. Okay. Uh, Barcelona was number fifteen at five billion. Also, so and then it doesn't. Let's see. Premier doesn't get till we got obviously Manchester United at four point six. Yeah. So I mean. For the, the most part, guys, the Raptors are two, I think, 0. 0.5. Mm-hmm. And so the Leafs, I think, two, two billion. So, right, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So, it goes NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, that would be three. And then I give, uh, we'll go who's, Spanish. Who's Major League Baseball. What do you mean they're three? Like three in value? Um, uh, number three in regards to the breakdown of what the majority of them in the top 50 are because oh, top 50 or serious thing. Okay, so yeah, number one is NFL, two you said was. Uh, number number NFL number two is um NBA NBA okay NBA and, and MLB and three number three um and so I mentioned Knicks and basketball it was uh the Golden State Warriors and the one after then the Lakers um scrolling down here the Lakers and then there's not a lot of basketball for a while it's a lot of football a lot of NFLs so and then which makes sense right so I mean. I find it interesting because the most paid players are in like those other leagues. 
you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Football mm -hmm. and soccer, but the most valuable mm -hmm. play. It, it's like, it just showed you how the NFL doesn't pay their guys. It, that's what I'm seeing because mm -hmm. like the NFL most valued, but they pay their players a lot less versus soccer, the world football teams who pay their players a lot more, but they're not as valuable. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It just showed you how much players are getting robbed in the NFL. Right, and NFL stadiums. So I'm thinking about the ticket prices, maybe, uh, and there's ticket prices, but they're I think they're as big as the ones over overseas. Right, maybe. that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, you so know what I'm saying so. And ticket prices are like mm -hmm. again, but I I really think ah. if we compare the actual salary of players in those right. leagues in Europe, right. right, in Spain, those guys they're getting paid way more than NFL players, way right. way more, and mm -hmm. they're getting guaranteed money, mm -hmm. right? So and also there's less players, also. Pardon me? That's true. Uh, there are less so players. So there's more players, less, but then yeah, on the NFL side, players, but... more players, and that's why they're not paying them as much. Yeah, so it kind so of bounces it's... out. But I mean, mm -hmm. of course, correlation. I'm just, I, I'm curious to see mm -hmm. like which, like, like players overall get paid. Like, if we just do from like one to like the entire roster of players for each team, mm -hmm. I'm curious to know what that difference is. But hey, valuable is valuable, right? It's yeah. the franchise, it's the money, it's the logo. People know what that, that cowboy star it means. People know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, to me, it's branding. Like, honestly, if you look at that, it's branding. But, mm -hmm. yeah, the Giants still being up there. I'm surprised. The Giants, yeah, the Knicks. Yeah, me too. They're all New York teams, though. So, New York, yeah. New Yorkers, they travel there. They move. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised about New York. But, wow. Yeah. The only I, team that's missing from New York six, football. Three are New York teams? Crazy. New York Jets didn't make the list, which I'm actually, I mean, I'm not surprised by. Yeah, I, am, I, I mean, they're New Jersey. Yeah. They're like right, New yeah. Jersey. That's yeah. why. New yeah. Jersey, that's right. So speaking of states, so um, on the way out of this, I want to say this in regards to the most, see, top 50 most valuable teams where they play in what state or uh, what region we'll go with. Mm -hmm. uh, number one is California. Number two, like you mentioned, New York. Uh, number three is England. Number four would be Florida. Number five, Illinois, Massachusetts. Hmm. Interesting. So the, really, it's it's all North American dominated outside of England, which is for the obvious reasons of being, you know, Manchester City, Manchester United. But outside of that, it's it seems like U.S. states are completely dominating where all the value is in regards to sports, which I didn't think, to tell you the truth. Yeah, it, it's... But I just think that in North America, and I, 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 I mean, I want the numbers, but I just feel like like we're just, like, this this entire capitalist, like, we're in a capitalist society, North America, so I'm not mm -hmm. surprised. Like, right. people's number one religion is their bank account, right? <laughs> or, what they're, or what they're wearing. You know what I'm saying? For real, for right. real. Like, yeah. Christianity comes second or Muslim, whatever, you know, God you pray to. But the number one religion is consumption and and purchasing. Like, there's ads at Fahim. There's ads everywhere. There's ads right. on Instagram. There's ads. On, every look is a freaking ad. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, we're just programmed to buy, 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 buy. Um, you know, and values go higher, 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 higher. <laughs> like, think about right. this, right? These broadcasting companies, their money doesn't come from the sport it comes from the advertising the advertising facts so we're just built on consumption and purchasing and buying that's what we're built on so i mean i'm not sure and i can't speak for any other country or region i haven't lived in europe before i've lived in africa before i've lived in the caribbean and even the caribbean like when i lived there people wanted to get nike people just wanted like stuff because it was on tv like they wanted jordan because they knew who jordan was like you know but it wasn't to a point where you know like it, it it's it's something that has kind of imprinted this whole I, i'm as a human i'm defined by what brand i have on or what clothing i have on and it's something that is just it's it's embedded so and the best i mean in north america they're really good at the joneses right making you feel like oh you're not really good enough if you want to be like this you have to wear these and stuff like that and you know like these guys give a lot to athletes to wear their brands you know what i'm saying like theme if someone wears your hat and your hat designer that can change your entire projection projection of like money right because we're so influenced by what people have influencers it's a, it's a is a status job. symbol <laughs> status symbol most definitely you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not really surprised that north america has a lot of 
valuable franchise because like in North America they're really good. I just say America, not North because Canada sucks at that. Like we <laughs> we suck at that. But in America they're really good at capitalizing and creating value and, and and increasing value behind their brands at a very high rate. So mm. yeah. So I hear you when you say Canada sucks at that, but let's keep in mind the Raptors have really raised. Uh, the value of that. And I thought they did a good job of actually acknowledging that they needed to find a way to rebrand with the We the North slogan that started about four or five years ago. I when think- they hire some black people in there. It's okay. okay. Hire people in there. You know what I'm saying? Again, it's like when you increase your diversity, you, but you're right though, that was a great campaign. Mm. Um, we the North and stuff like that. I think partnering with Drake, OVO people, right. we can't, yeah. we can't knock that partnership. I think that really right. helped grow the brand right. and OVO actually is partnering with Ignite um, um, the, the G League Ignite team so they're mm. also going to be partnering with them they're going to have the OVO logo with their jerseys like mm. OVOs are really good I mean I'm not sure what they're trying to do because I'm seeing that they're doing I, other stuff in other sport uh, leagues but I just think so, that they're becoming a sports marketing team so no, you, or marketing you, type branch I should say <laughs> you mentioned you don't know what you're trying, they're trying to do um, and I uh, hmm, how I say this so they're looking to partner with the G, G League Ignite team. Thumbs up, like applaud. But the Raptors have a 905 G League team already. I would assume that they would try and partner with the Raptors 905 team. No? No, so they're, they're partnered. But remember, partnerships are different different types of partnership, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. That's all. And also, okay. like, the, the, the G League does have, like, they, they have the OVO nights and different stuff like that, I think, in the G mm -hmm. League. So, but remember, mm -hmm. like, the... The Raptors, par Raptors have other partnerships that they have to work with. So, mm -hmm. like, the G League partnership, it could be more like, we, we're giving you more money than all your other endorsements, so we mm, get to have cool. you on your, on your jersey. You know right. what I'm saying? Because remember, every yeah. partnership is so different, so we can't yeah. assume. They could have yeah. tried to do that, and maybe they couldn't because you know, they, they have their own partnership. Like, we don't yeah, know. I, don't know, I yeah. don't know enough about the situation. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm just you saying know. I was figuring if you're going to do associate with a G League team. We'll, but, you know. but remember, the NBA G League Ignite team is not a G League team. They're high school, high school players. That's the team. The Ignite, uh. Ignite team. They're, they're yeah. not actually they're, they're, they're NBA G League Ignite team, but they're all high school players. Like so, they have okay. a few. They're all like they're all like high school guys. So mm -hmm. remember that that's the league for guys that don't want to go to college. It's like yeah, it's no, like, I get it. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah. it. So I get not it. actually a G League team. I get um, it. I so, get it. But yeah. but you know there is you know the OVO City Edition for the Raptors. Do yeah, they okay. have anything with the, the 905? The, and if not, maybe... They, they, but I'm saying they probably do because they're partnered okay. with, with the Raptors yeah. and right. Raptors own 905. So right. by association, they're probably partnered with them. So I, like, I'm not sure exactly what they do. But again, yeah. when it comes to sponsorships or brands, it's all different because some some people pay for exclusivity, right? Yeah. Um, they, they pay for that. They pay for the exclusivity of that team. And that's mm -hmm. a lot more money than just being a part of you know, a part team, right? So okay. there's just different, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah, as I'm seeing, there are OVO Raptors jerseys and G League stuff. So they have that already. Yeah. So, a 905? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, Shout they out. have, they, they sell them. They, they, they have like, so they, they've done OVO, G League uniforms, different brands. Yeah, there they you do go. it. So okay. it's similar, right. but the Ignite team is, it, that for them, yeah. they're trying to get into the, more of the high school type of course space, of course like and it, yeah that's and huge it's space more, now yeah. so it, yeah it's going to obviously open their fan base uh oh, because course. ignite if someone's into g league the ignite is going to be bigger i think in the states than 905 in the states let's be real let's keep it but above, not even so. that they're gonna be playing in the, in the um in vegas now too mm, right you know what so, i'm saying so yeah, yeah. so sh you know yeah. what i'm saying so shout like, out they're shout out playing and yeah like they're gonna be playing but but that but remember they're they're more they're labeled as a developmental the developmental basketball team. They're not an actual, and they play in the G League, but it's like their players aren't like guys that can be in the NBA, but they're, you know, or, or been yeah. drafted. Yeah, they don't have any drafted guys. I think the difference between their team and the G League team, their guys, there's no drafted. But we have to be careful because it's, yeah. It's, uh, but the G League, they don't have drafted guys either. For instance, like if you, you yeah, can, some don't, can some do though. Some, some, some guys get drafted oh. and are pushed to the G League. Right? Oh, I get so, what you're saying. From that, you know okay, saying? Fine. Whereas so not, the okay, team, because... no one's pushed because remember, they're in Nevada. There's no NBA teams there. So they're their own right, entity. Right, right. Okay. But, but they fine. play in that G League, but they're in, they're in their own right. entity of, they're not associated with any other like NBA. No, I, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I get you. I get you. 
Yeah. All right. So, Nellie, do you want to go to For the Culture? For the Culture. We get to highlight individuals for the culture. And today, we get to highlight someone that I think has been wrongfully, again, crucified mm. by Fahim, the media, and people of color in the media. You think, you know, being a person of color in the media, we have more grace for folks that look like us. I'm not saying we can't call people out and be accountable, but I think that this person went through a whole bunch of drama and I just think that, you know, I mean, I don't think we were a part of the drama. I think we we're like, yeah, like this happened, but we're not going to, you know, crucify someone for what they were dealing with. So for this segment, I really want to highlight Ben Simmons uh, for the culture because he's done a lot of amazing things for the culture of Raheem that doesn't go noticed yeah. at all. And yeah. is it because people like to pick on him is it because they, they rather just talk about, you know, what he can't. You know, him sitting up for a year last year, he refusing to play for the Philadelphia. Some might look at it as, hey, good for you, Ben. You know, mentally, you weren't ready to play. And other like, you know what, Ben? You're a coward. You should have played. Like, what's your problem? Da -da -da -da. Be a competitor. Be tough. You're a basketball player. There's always those two sides coming at each other. And, you know, athletes are gladiators, right? They're known to be the tough guys, but they're human. <laughs> the human first for him so i'm really happy because to highlight what ben has been doing for the culture now he has a he has a foundation called ben simmons family foundation and they do a lot of great things in the community so they have the like helping hoops uh the, the do more project um the ben simmons cult for kids and the philly pledge which i'm going to land on the philly pledge here um, on top of that when they remember when they had the crazy bushfires for him that was happening like in like South America, California, and California, Australia. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Him and then other uh, Australian players donated money to help combat those fires. Big. And those players were like Thon, Thon Maker, Patty Mills, Joe Ingles, um, Ryan. Was Andrew Bogut? Bro Pardon me? Was Andrew Bogut in there? You're listing some prominent NBA. Yeah, I must see Andrew. I must see no? Bogut. I'm seeing Jonah Bolden, mm -hmm. Aaron Baines, Ryan Brokoff from the, of the Mavs. Matthew mm -hmm. Del Delvanova, sorry, Della Vadova. Della Del Vadova, you remember Del Della Vadova. And then right. Dante mm -hmm. um, Exum, or Exum. Exum, uh, Exum. Yeah, from Dante the Cavaliers. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. they donated to, so, I mean, that's just one track, right? So I'm landing on the Philly pledge for him because that made kind of news this week. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, big up his sister who helps, his elder sister, Melissa, who helps run his community and social impact work right. for the Benson Family Foundation. And that includes stuff from youth leadership pro programs to partnerships with organizations like Operation Warm, giving warm winter coats to kids who need them, uh, right, last year, and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. But we found out, Fahim, that he's been giving donations anonymously, right, because of the critique he got on the court and not wanting to play for a team. Now, I don't know about you, Fahim, if... Someone's offering to 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 support me in a scholarship, right? What did that person do to you to say I don't want your scholarship money or support because of your decision not to play for a team that I like? You know what I mean? Like I, I just think it's so. I mean, like you said for him earlier, this could have been an absurd topic, but no. I want to first of all big up Ben mm. for giving back to the communities that he's also a part of, grew up in, and the ones that he plays in. So big up to mm -hmm. you and your family for that but on the flip side Definitely. it's also like wow you don't want to accept a donation or accept something or he has to donate anonymously for folks to accept it mm -hmm. that to me is very unfortunate for him so first of all talk about your thoughts on his charitable work for the culture and of course your thoughts on kids or having having a fear of kids not wanting to accept his scholarships because of his name being attached to it right so It's a, hmm. let me land with this. I'll, I'll come in really quickly. So Ben Simmons, he has a technology scholarship and kids were dropping off because his name's attached to it. That's why I was saying earlier, this could be an absurd topic because if you have somebody who's looking to help you out, especially if you're in a situation uh, with the inner city uh, kids in Philadelphia, um, why wouldn't you? Unfortunate thing is, these kids, Ben's, Ben Simmons' name 
it's been dragged through the mud. And there isn't a lot of pride, or sorry, there wasn't a lot of pride. These kids are fans. So if the general population is down on Ben Simmons, kids are impressionable. And I'm just trying to put myself in their shoes. Like mm -hmm. think of something where something's happened where, hmm, I'm just trying to think. I want. I was gonna throw Kyrie, but that maybe that's not a good example. But I'm just well, trying to think. People taking of it. his money, shoot, left, right, right. center. <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, yeah, that, hey. yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to think of somebody. Uh, let's do this together. Is there some? Is there an athlete that has come that a uh, scandals maybe come out about them that made them public enemy number one? Just but real. it wasn't a scandal though. It's my thing. No, no. Like, I, I, I get it. That's why my but, issue. But if, my if, issue if being no, like, hold on, hold on. If you're in Philadelphia, though, if you're in Philadelphia that's pretty much equivalent, I think, but to a scandal. But it's not, because okay. I look at the Philly fans that are not like, like, there are right. Philly fans, the true point, Fahim, that are like that, and some that aren't. Right. And right? these were, but these so are the ones that issue. are like that, though. So tell us, yeah. let's, let's, I'm trying to put myself in the ones who are like that. So you're a kid, you know, your dad, your uncle, everyone hates Ben Simmons. Um, you don't like Ben Simmons. <laughs> so, um, and you but have a you scholarship. You need money to go to school. But you okay. need some money to go to school. <laughs> Um, so maybe, I'm not gonna go to school and and and, and, and go to you know, I'm not gonna go to school or accept a warm jacket. Um, being underprivileged because mm. of Ben Simmons, like no, for but real, watch for this, real. watch this. No, and but it's not really the kids that are making this decision, though. It's their parents that are making these decisions for them. Think about this. Um, that too, yeah. I right? mean, it could be so, that too. Mm -hmm. So if the parents are saying, "Hey, you know what? I hate Ben Simmons for X reason." Um, you know, the kid is a byproduct of it. He's going to be affected by it. But the parents, I can see parents, uh, you know, adults can be petty. And I think if you're not, I'm not justifying it all, but I'm just trying to see, like, I think it's actually outrageous that Ben Simmons is doing such great work and people in Philadelphia are, are ignoring not accept, it. ignoring his care. good work. Right? They're like, whatever, play right. basketball, damn it. Right. Sh right. Like, shut up and dribble. Uh, honestly. Right. And <laughs> also know, shut up and shoot. That, that's what I want to say. <laughs> well, no, 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 not in Ben Simmons' case. It's not shut up and shoot. It's shut up and I pass. mean, no. I, I mean, all, no, Fahim, actually, no. If we talk to these Philly fans, their issue of Ben is that he, he needs to shoot the ball. No, 100%, but he doesn't that's shoot. It. So that I guess yeah. you can say shut up and shoot does not apply to him. But um, yeah, I just think it's... It, it, but, poor guy. Okay, poor so that's guy. true. They, but what's your thoughts on what he's doing, though? Like, you understand 100. it's absurd. Mm -hmm. It's outrageous. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. to me, if you're in need, you don't really care where it's coming from. Um, because you're so like, especially for me, someone who grew up in welfare, who had gifts from the government coming to my home every Christmas, like, like, I like, yes, like I was like, oh, the government, I don't like this prime minister. So I'm like, no, like I want mm. that toy. You know what I'm saying? I want that gift. Like for okay. me, like the fact that there's a fear of like the fact that Ben was, Ben wants to help them so badly for him that he said, I'm going to help you to the point where I'll remove my name because I want you to accept this happily which he's speaks and, and that, again that tells me that like he's someone that really has to be celebrated most people want to be attached to their donations and mm -hmm. they're right or wrong like you know the prince of the world prince of the world who donates a, a, who, who uh, rest in peace prince but he gave a lot to his community and to people globally mm -hmm. but it was always anonymous right. right a lot of nba players they always and again i guess the nba cares program they put their names with their charity, right? It's a big right. part of being a player in the NBA. You have to donate money towards charity. It's a big part of their like their ideology there, which is great. But if either Ben said, you know what, I want these kids to be happy when they get this donation, I don't want them backing up because of me. So that's okay. Donate hundred percent. And, and and some folks wouldn't do that. They want their names right. attached and say, too bad. Get take this take this money and be quiet, right? So I yeah. I, I want to celebrate him for that and being a bigger person in, in regards to charity work. 100%. This is a celebration of Ben Simmons and what he's doing, 100%. I do have a two-part with this, though. First part, um, if you are... I was thinking about burning of jerseys. Give me someone whose jersey's been burned in that city. I don't want to say LeBron because LeBron made it made good. No, LeBron. Yeah, okay, but give me another. Think of. No, come on. There's, got, there's got others. Let's... 
uh burn jerseys come on um um if you tell me come on i could remember lebron <laughs> no 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 like there's got to be uh there's probably others I, but lebron was the biggest one when he went to he Miami, was and that's was why huge. i threw it out but i mean lebron he has but, a school there he, people, fan, he's made a fan, mess. fans think, burned at, fan like there's always one fan that burns a jersey like it's not like you know what yeah, I'm saying? But like, that, usually when you hear so let a, me uh, hold up i'm looking it up right now so six okay, nba you, players whose jerseys were burned by fans thank you Go ahead. So I, let I, me look up the. There's so a ton the, of these. The, the one with LeBron, as I said. Yeah, of, of course, hundred percent. Uh, Ray I, Allen. Ray Allen. Okay, yeah, who else? Boston ahead. fans. They're also yeah, yeah. very hyper emotional. Right. Right. Um, Dwight Howard jersey. Uh, Dwight, Dwight Howard, Howard burning enough. jersey. <laughs> okay. okay. Right. Um, uh, uh, they else? have Kevin Durant, which of course we know that. Ah, KD. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, and then they have of course LeBron James. So number one was LeBron. Okay, so that's fine. Number so, two, of, of the, sorry, who was number two? Oh, Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward. They burned his jersey Hayward, again. Boston really? fans, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry, um, is, and actually, or may, it might have actually. I don't think it was Boston. Actually, no, it was a Boston. I'm saying it was, it was a Boston. Fans. My bad. Utah, it was Utah, um, Utah fans. Utah when he played Utah, in Utah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, throw Hayward out. Um, we'll go. <laughs> he said throw uh, Hayward out. <laughs> so let's, let's go with. Jersey was burned though. It was burned. That actually, Ray Allen would be, I think, perfect. Oh, and Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade got jersey burned too. Dwayne Wade. What, and why did they burn Wade when he left from Miami? He left Miami, to yeah. To, yep. Where do you go after Miami? Chicago. Chicago. But the, okay. So where, let and me he's use, from Chicago. So why would you burn his jersey? It's so weird. Like, let me use an example. I think the best one would be Ray Allen, for instance. Ray Allen, he went to the enemy. He went to Miami, right? Kevin Durant, so did Kevin Durant, too. And LeBron. Yeah, okay, well, we can use him also. But... In, their, in, their, in their conference. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> either, either one of those two. I was just using an example yeah. of, say, for instance, Ray Allen, right? Ray Allen's in Boston. Um, they win the championship, and he goes to the enemy, the dark side, Miami. Um, you're in Boston, and Ray Allen has a charity. And as a collective, Boston is off of Ray Allen. I could totally see... If you're a parent saying, you know what, we don't want anything. We don't want his like. We don't want his. Then that means his, like that means like you weren't really in need at the first place. You weren't really in need. People in need wouldn't act like that. They'll they'll, they'll be humbled mm -hmm. and be gracious and and have grace and be like, thank you. Yes. I don't like you, but thank you for contributing to my child's future. Like mm -hmm. I, again, I'm not. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, man. These parents are whack. I'm sorry. Some like, people, some parents, some parents have pride, whack, though. Man. There's a lot of, there's whack a lot of. Parents, I'm not justifying it, but I'm saying there's a lot I know, of pride I, involved. I, I know you're you know not. I mean? I'm, a, I'm mm. gonna call them. Say what you call Joe the liar. Those parents are petty as f. Okay. <laughs> um, and even Melissa, his sister, she mentioned that there are words that people in Philly might not wear the coat if they knew it was from Ben Simmons. Right. Yeah. They I know. No and other I, jacket, I, bro. You don't have a winter jacket, but you don't mm -hmm. see this one because from Ben Simmons. Yeah. So she said that. Um, a few kids even dropped technology scholarships because his name was attached. Yeah. That was heart-wrenching. Like, like, I could course. imagine, mm -hmm. like, how sad it is where, like, yo, I'm giving a scholarship towards technology. To Like, this, anyway, yeah. those yeah. parents are petty. You're um, being selfish because your kid's future is going to help them develop. And sometimes, Fahim, again in life, sometimes you work for somebody that, that like, you're not really a fan of, but your purpose is that mission. Right. Mm -hmm. And some people, I think human, we become this like weird, like emotional people that of like, oh, my pride justifies my cause. No, your pride. That's the issue. There's too much pride. This to me is all about pride. Right. Mm -hmm. By these parents not taking it because that, that, that that's for your child. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's for your child, bro. That's your child's future. So again, I'm here to judge those parents, but I'm gonna call them out and say, yo, you got to do better, bro. So that. let me let me add to your call out actually, not just the parents. You do I'm gonna go with the media. I'm gonna call it the media. Yeah, because you know what? Man. With Ben Simmons, it's always so cool to you know put out these little you know these media things that's gonna discredit him. But he does something like it's. A, I think it's a crime that he's doing this, and amongst all the stuff that's been going on with Ben Simmons. I've just, this just came to light very recently. I had no idea this is happening. You know, I think there should be a balance where someone in the media who, who is responsible enough to say, hey, you know what? Yeah, we're going to dump on him, but let's try and show, a, like, let's try and get some kind of balance out of this, balance. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The fact that I think it's a crime that no one knows about this. And he's been doing this. So I want to shout out Ben Simmons for the work he's been doing. Big up Ben Simmons. And I do want to mm -hmm. shout out um, the person who broke this story. Um, so his name is Tristan Rawcliffe. And mm -hmm. so big up to you for writing a piece that is that's pretty much talking about his charity work and him still donating 
despite kids despite. not want despite uh-huh. all that hatred. Uh-huh. Um, right. and all the work he's doing for the Ben Simmons Family Foundation. Big up to them. And, you know, mm-hmm. we're going to keep highlighting athletes who are doing great work. Right. Because this is why we do for the culture is to, mm-hmm. like, bring balance and bring light to things that we're not celebrating. We celebrate too much hate and anger mm-hmm. and outrage. Yeah. We got to have moments of just like, yo, congrats, bro. Good for right. you. Right. And yeah. hopefully right. it's going to create other people to donate, give back. I know it's a hard time, but, you know, like giving back a small something small, buying socks or gloves those are the small things that will go far for some people so mm-hmm. big up to you ben for doing what you're doing big ben up ben and his big family up ben. of course most definitely yeah nelly j you want to close it out with that's absurd that's absurd fahim bro what was absurd this week what was absurd can we put this in the file of just let him live <laughs> <laughs> Zion Williamson, (laughs) he was asked about Thanksgiving and his, I guess his response after the game to what he was going to eat for Thanksgiving, he was afraid to give what he was going to eat for uh, Thanksgiving due to the fact of fear of being shamed through social media. Absurd. First of all, Fahim, and again, we got to call up the media here again. What like uh, are are we asking every NBA athlete that day what they want to eat for Thanksgiving? Is that a question we're asking everyone? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. come on, man, stop trolling these players, dog. Like, it's just so. Mm-hmm. But I get it. That tweet went viral, and everyone commenting, ho ho ho, you know. But I'm happy Zion said, no, I, I'm not gonna feed. I'm not gonna fit into your narrative, right? right. Like, because mm-hmm. I think they asked them, what's your favorite dish to eat on Thanksgiving? <laughs> and he was like, nope. No matter what I say, y'all gonna, yeah. you know, troll me or something like that. And, and even right. in the, in the pre- press conference, he said, like, yo, whatever I say, it's it's going to be a troll, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so the media trolls these athletes. And I understand that's their job. Obviously, someone asked her to say that. I, I'm not going to come after her, but clearly yeah. someone told her, hey, can you please just... Let's try and catch them slipping. Question. Catch them yeah. slipping. That's what it is. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I mean... Zion did say social media going to clown me if I answer this question. And he's rightfully so. Right. So he didn't get clowned for, for answering. He got clowned for not answering. Not answering. They know <laughs> it's a lose-lose. So it you can't win, man. Uh, that's, right. that's what I call absurd because he really can't win. But mm-hmm. I do want to bring light to something that he did mention before as well. Mm-hmm. Is that this question was asked after the fact. He commented about the fat shaming or the body shaming he received from the media. Mm -hmm. right ESPN was accused of of fat shaming um Mr. Zion Williamson right and so they're known to do that to him oh he's too big he has to lose weight first of all I feel like that's something and again we can talk about an athlete and 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 how they can perform in the best performance but it's how you say it right right if you want to talk about his weight why don't you bring in an actual doctor that can say hey we find for the optimal performance mm-hmm. that Zion should be at this weight for optimal like there's ways to say without being all oh, he like, was it for him it's not what you say is how you say it and I'm yeah. happy that Zion called him out as well to say y'all been fashioning me and it's not mm-hmm. fair listen for him we saw a coach get fined for commenting on a WNBA player's weight during a foul call right he got right. fined for that mm-hmm. yeah okay by yeah. the WNBA Right. So if we're going to find coaches for talking about a player's weight in the women's side, mm-hmm. we got to keep it consistent for him on the men's side. We can't find coaches for commenting on, on a woman's weight, but the men's weight, whatever, they're men. They can deal with it. No. Right. Mm-hmm. No. No. Yeah. Nah, man. Nah. I ain't about I that. I, Fahim, you know, my, Fahim, I, I made a comment about, about the, again last year when it was happening. I said, I'm not a fan of this, like, commenting people's weight. Like, yes, you can say they can use a few pounds here and there. But to, to, to make them feel shameful about it, like, yo, right. I get it. He's paid to play. But sometimes, especially during the pandemic, there's a lot going on last year, a couple of years ago. We got to, like, give people grace. So anyway, yeah. I think, I, I think so after that, so that, that came out, I think, November 8th on Zion t- commenting about dealing with fat shaming during his injury, right? Mm-hmm. And then two weeks later, or sorry, three weeks later after that comment he made, we're going to ask him about what he wants to eat for that. Like, ah, man. Let him eat in peace. Let him eat in peace. Let the man eat in peace. Yo, listen, food is good, y'all. I don't know about y'all, but 
but I love me some yeah. food for him. Green um, beans, tomato, like food yams. is good. Okay. Anyways, he named it. True. Okay. Um, I was gonna say in <laughs> regards to the media, <laughs> the media, the media trying to catch people slipping. Um, on the way out, they asked Kyrie what he was going to uh, or his thoughts on Thanksgiving Day, knowing that every maybe for the last two seasons now, it's been well documented that Kyrie Irving does not celebrate Thanksgiving. He's entitled. Uh, they asked him after the game, oh, Kyrie, you know, what's that? Like, they asked, but he, Kyrie sidestepped it by by saying, literally, like, you know, I don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but to, uh, to those that do, um, you know, hope you have the best Thanksgiving, et cetera, right? Um, so, it, it, you know, Kyrie's a hot topic right now. And just the fact that what kind of got him in this situation was uh, the media asking him about his post now the media after asking him about thanksgiving it's like the media is literally looking hmm if you're on their radar they're looking for something and it's a shame that if you're an athlete i think things like that take away the trust you have with the media because you know that the media is not in your best interest um so i just want to shout out zion and man like Kyrie, who um you know who are in the situation where they have to always um, you know, be on the P's and Q's because you have people out there trying to catch you tripping. Yeah, and I mean, Thanksgiving, guys, we're going to celebrate the genocide of Native Americans. Hey, like, hey, come on, man. Like, hey, hey, hey. We, like, we already know what it is, but you know what I'm saying? they don't want like, to hear come that. Come on, though. man. So, but again, that. like, you can be thankful for your mm -hmm. family. Like, I think right. it's always great to be thankful. And I think people who celebrate, they think they celebrate mostly because of that. They celebrate to be the thankfulness of family, you know, like everyone being healthy, like, not for us to be thankful for but thanksgiving what it was meant for was to mean like the coming of the pilgrims and and we all know how that ended so i just think that let people live people are going to celebrate every every uh um, you know holiday nor do we have to tell you what we're going to eat our favorite <laughs> dish like and that's why i think what zion is doing is something i think most more athletes should be doing telling mm -hmm. the media i'm asking a question right remember don't forget the the one called Marshall, um, I mean, um, what's what's it? my gosh, my boy, um, gosh, is it is it uh, Marshall Lynch? Marshall Lynch, thank you. Okay. The the, the I, I call him the, the prophecy of Marshall Lynch, who said, "I'm only here so I don't get fired." Yeah, get fined, right? <laughs> you don't, guys, you don't you don't have to answer every question you're asked. Right, you don't have right. to, right? right. You, you really don't have to. All you right. gotta do is show up. So to me, saying, "Nah, I'm good." I hope more athletes do that and check mm -hmm. these media folks who try to troll you online. Right. Now I'm good. Right. Now, no. so about, now I'm good. You go ahead. You you quote me. How about that? You make it right. up for yourself. Like right. I'm not. Right. I'm I'm not entertaining you. And guess what? Trust me, Fahim. Having that done to you on live TV, you feel stupid. So you're not gonna mm -hmm. do it again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm yeah. all I'm all for that energy. Refusing Most to answer questions. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, DJ, I think we should put this episode in the books. Yes, y'all. That was the Good Rookie Show. Yep. Yeah. So as you know, Fahim, we took the time to do shout outs at the end of the show. Um, so this is quite interesting because my shout out this week, I had a couple in mind that I'm like, oh, man, why am I going to shout out? I'm going to shout out. But I think for me, I'm going to shout out Ben Simmons, Fahim. That's right. Okay. I'm going to shout him out. Um, I'm going to shout him out Not because... Bad. It takes, honestly, like, it takes a man to, after being, like, crucified for a whole year, to come back and be patient with himself. He's playing better, better, and we're seeing him, like, getting better every game. Shout out to him. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you know, I'm a Philadelphia fan. I'm thinking, like, yo, if I was a Philly fan, if I was Pascal. There's moments where, for him, I was mad at Pascal Siaka. I was mad at OG and mad at Freddie, but my anger wasn't to a point where... I forgot that they were human beings and that they deserve a time to learn from the experience, right? And I think that Ben deserves time to learn from his mistakes, to learn from what he can do better. And I think it's not our it's not our place to put him in a box of what we think he should be. He should be able to move, grow, develop, change freely in whoever he wants to be. And so I'm gonna shout him out because he's playing really well as of late uh, for Brooklyn. His defense has been stellar. We played him against Toronto, Fahim. Like, he was, I think, three steals. So, yeah, he's coming back to who he is. And I just think that 
Yeah, big him up, man. Big him up. How about you? Yeah, I'm not going to piggyback that to your shout out, but I, I love that shout out. Uh, just the fact that it's always good to see from people try to hold you down, people not give up. You know, he, it's very easy. I mean, for Ben Simmons to, who knows, this could have turned another way. This could, it's a, kind of a form of bullying, actually. Like everyone was down on him. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I like that shout out. Um, on the way out, I'd like my shout out quickly to be I know it's World Cup and we're here weekly, but I just want to say uh, Team Canada. Took their took a loss first World Cup in over thirty years. Took a loss of one zero, but played very well. And um, you know, which I was talked about someone like Ben Simmons who was down, Alfonso Davies who missed a penalty kick, which could have been our first goal in forever. I think mm -hmm. ever is it ever? I, well, that, that would be the first I, I one ever, remember. right? I'm pretty sure it's ever. But um, but you know what? Uh, he missed. Um, keep his head up. And so I just want to shout out uh, Team Canada Soccer um, in the World Cup. Didn't get that win, but it's it's coming. I'll end there. I love that shout out. Actually, that was my number two option for <laughs> shout out. For that. So I'm happy you went with that one. That's great. <laughs> That's All great, right. y'all. So guys, also on the way out, we're having the uh the holiday gift drive that mm. is dropping. So again, we ask that you donate. Um, this is for the homeless in Toronto downtown. Uh, we try we hit up three to five shelters depending on how much how much we get. But there are three that we just have to complete because some of them have babies, women, kids that just deserve some some cheer during the holidays. And if we can help with that, that'd be great. Of course, a lot of men are homeless in Toronto as well. So we have hot hats, gloves, socks, uh, you know, deodorant, soap, toothbrush, toothpaste, necessities right, that these guys are gonna that the folks are gonna need mm -hmm. uh, is gonna help them as well. Because these shelters don't get a lot of donations, y'all trust me call a shelter up and ask them they don't get that much especially now so um if you can donate even a five dollar dollar rama glove we, we'll take it feel me so uh everything is actually on our link tree uh you can order from amazon or you can donate email good rookies podcast at gmail.com that's it so <laughs> love it love it love it <laughs> all right Whew. so put this episode in the books Nelly J yeah man so y'all that's a good rookie show if you had a good time you enjoyed yourself please like subscribe and tell a friend to tell a friend for you we're on all platforms if you're looking for us as a guest group good rookie show we out peace, peace.